G'day guys, and Tim Tam here. Today we're going to learn about mesh-based lighting. Now, mesh-based lighting is pretty much essential to any interior rendering, and there are different ways to achieve it. There are pros and cons to each technique that you will be using. Now, before, before we go, in, go into the tutorial, I just want to say that I, in my I think I'm about this is my 12th or 13th. I've never said subscribe or like to my channel. Um, I don't know. I just didn't really think about. I just didn't really think of that. So, I mean, if you're up to this, and you obviously are interested in my tutorials and my and Octane in general, and um, I just want to say thank you for listening to my ums, ers, and ums my long pauses and my con and my stuttering, continuous stuttering. Um, there we go, there we go again with the um. So um, yeah, subscribe to my channel um, and enjoy the next upcoming tutorials. So, let's get into the tutorial. Now there are many things you have to learn, that you have to know first, and there are a few tips um, given by there are a few tips you need to know when work when working with uh, mesh-based lighting. The first is now bear in mind um, these tips um, is from a Octane uh, user member that um, he said back in the early 2.43 version. So um, I'm just quoting what he said. So quotes is by him. Um, it's best to use normal like solid like flat geometry based lighting. You can use surround like a cube or a UV sphere but there are some bad effects to that. It's good to use a diffuse material surrounding because it's the amount of bounces that a diffuse has against a glossy is much more significant. And the next is, um, that's pretty much it. So make sure your materials are diffuse. You're like you're surrounding your overall materials, and make sure you have flat planed objects. Now I don't really like to bring in my modeling program since this is for Octane Render. But I think it's good to see how my scene, your scene, set out. So in this, I just only got a new thing. I got a new thing, by the way. This is my scene set out in Blender. It took about five minutes to make. No biggie. Um. Whoa. All right. So now you need to bear in mind that. Oh, hang on. I'll get to that later. So this is my scene. As you can see, diffuse um, box area. These are my light emitters. This is the UV sphere emitter. This is the cube emitter, and this is the single-sided plane emitter. Now, these are the IES lights. Now, what are IES lights? Well, I'm going to get to that now. So, here is a website. I got from IES Lights, um, where I got the website. I used a friend called Google. I don't know if you heard of it before, but um, it's a good way to get information very easily. I hear his dad Larry is very rich. So IES Lights are pretty much all of these. It's a plane with a file on it, and in this file you can distort how light works, how the light looks like. So it can be like this, that, this like that and here. Um, it's, it, it stands for Eliminating Engineering Society and um, here it looks like here. Now this is based off of uh, 3ds Max but this is general this is pretty much the general theory of it and pretty much works for everything. It's a good read it's a good read but I'm kind of limited on time. Now with IES lights, there's a few things you have to know. You just can't put a plane down and slap a texture on it, or sla slap a material index on it. You have to UV map it, which is very basic. I just UV mapped it from the point of view. Very easy, 
very simple, took a millisecond. So make sure you UV wrap your planes and make sure they are up against the wall like this. They don't have to be, but to see the full effect of it, make sure you put them against the wall. That's how your scene's supposed to look like. Alright, and make sure with the plane planar object, make sure the normal is uh I think for some reason it doesn't. So if I add a plane, it's not going down. I have to rotate it for some reason. It doesn't go on both planes, which they should add. So now it's facing. Do that again. It's not facing, so right now it's facing upwards. Rotate it. Now it's facing. So yeah. And I'm pretty sure you can recreate this in my own 3ds Max. Um, and these are my gems. You can put anything. I was thinking of putting down Susanna, but I put diamonds down instead. So in, export that thing in an OBJ, an MLT file, and we'll start from scratch again. So file, new, objects, and go to your light OBJ. Now let's rescale the scene. All good. Alright, now let's add our materials. Now make sure you add all your diffuse, it will only work on diffuse. I'm just going to go fly for this because you should know already since you're already up to this tutorial. Now make sure you add a separate light for the IES lights. Now they should be here, they should be there. Structure your scene out well. Okay, now type your main in, main. Alright, now set your world up. Oh, ball that. Oh, no, don't set your world up yet. Alright, so you need, we now need to add the lights in, so right click, add, go to, so right click, add Emissions and texture emission. Texture emission. And I put that to the main. And as you can see, these are now turn the smooth off. These are now emitting lights. These are emitting these are these are emitting radiances, I think that's what it's called. Now turn the world settings off and turn the power all the way up. Now, as you can see, this one looks brighter. The reason for that is because it is a single sided geometry based mesh. The reason for this is because the all the lights being concentrating in one direction where the UV sphere and the cube are being faced all around and it's not getting enough bounces of lights. So that's the pros and cons. You can use it. I use it whenever I'm in a rush, but in professional standards, single-sided is the best to go. And also, these are the, the world, not the world, the uh, house is diffuse. And also create, put, oh, I'm just going to put a speck on the gem, a little bit of dispersion too. Okay, so now, time for the IES lights. Now, in the I'll, I'll give you uh, the OBJ to this, the OSC file, and the two IES lights. I'll give a random one to the ones I'll be using because, you know, I want you to have a random... I don't want to be fully the same. So, uh, get and the more emissions out. So, add, right click, add emissions, texture emission, and put that to the, f to the first one, which is there. Do the same. Emissions textured and put that one here. Now, this is the awesome bit. Right click, add textures, images, float image, not image, float image. And here is a stock of IS lights I got from the render, from the Octane render forum. I'm gonna choose random one, let's choose 19. Well, not you, but me. Textures, images. This is the second one. I'm going to choose a uh, six. Now, there is a certain place you have to put them in the texture emission, and that is the just 
uh, distribution, sorry. So you connect that to the distribution of that, and then connect that to the distribution of that. And set the power up. Set the power all the way up. So now how now right, so we have the let's just have a let's just give it a little bit of a close up. Alright, so well alright. Is it let's see the effect it does. How can we distort the image like you said? Well all we have to do is go to scaling and look at that. It's going psycho. And that is, see, it's like a spotlight for the scaling. It looks, that looks awesome. And now let's change the next one. Let's just bump up the power, and let's bump up the efficiency, and let's change the scaling. And that looks wicked awesome. Also change the gamma if you want and the power and uh, let's change the power to oops, wrong one very cool and very awesome now alright so now you now have the gist on IES lights, mesh based lights, single sided lights. Now the number now the important main thing, if your light is single sided base, in the real world light, in real world physics, you will never see a single single like a single planes light. Well you can. I think they're making the T V which is really paper thin, but you know that's prototype and and for the average consumer you just won't see it so how can you take care of that well it's easy go to right click add textures colors below texture oops float texture now we're going to call this light audacity just call this all right, light audacity Sorry for the spelling, I'm in a rush. Now, we are now going to get your material picker and we're going to pick all of the lights. So, put now we're going to put that uh, here, the third one. Put them on all of them, actually. All the ones with lights on it. Now, what this light of Dusty is going to do is very simple. Voila! The mesh is gone but the lights stay. That is just fantastic. Now, to have a to finish the scene off and to have a nice photorealistic render, just change the kernel, let's just to PMC, put the depth all the way up. I also do a tutorial on the uh, render kernel settings, so And there you go, professionally lit scene made with mesh based light and IES lighting. Thank you for listening to my tutorial, and this is the second time I've said it. Um, subscribe, like, spread the word out, and again I'm sorry for my stutters, ums, and errs.